today we're going to be looking at the simple past, uh, how it's formed in German, how it's used in German, and to simplify our discussion a bit, we're going to be looking specifically at German weak verbs. Other uh, presentations that I'm going to be uh, doing in the near future will be looking at irregular verbs and at strong verbs. But today we're going to be looking specifically at German weak verbs. So, um, as usual, uh, we're going to start the lecture with an example in English, and then we're going to transition over to a brief discussion of when do we use the simple past in German. And then after that, I'm going to give three examples on uh, using the simple past. Uh, machen, to make, arbeiten, to work, and haben, uh, to have. Each one sort of is uh, gives an example of uh, sort of rules that we could use uh, with other weak verbs in German. So, um, looking first at English, uh, what is the simple past? So, simple past, the first sentence, I rode the bus to work, it reports sort of a habitual action. I rode the bus to work every day. Um, or it could be a single event in the past. I rode the bus to work and then I did something else. Or it could be uh, a state of being. I knew what to do. Uh, in each case, it's a, it's a simple past. It's one, it's one verb. It's not a construction with a helper verb. I have ridden the bus to work or I have known what to do. So that's essentially uh, the simple past in a nutshell in English. So. German uses the simple past primarily in written narratives. So books, newspapers, magazine articles, uh, German fairy tales uses the simple past exclusively. It's uh, used, however, less in spoken German. Um, it just sounds, uh, some verbs just sound odd. As we'll see one example today, arbeiten, it just doesn't lend itself very well to a spoken situation. Uh, some verb forms, however, are used exclusively in spoken German. These are sort of what I tell uh, my students that are the high-frequency verbs, such as haben, uh, sein, and, and the modal verbs. Um, so uh, let's take a look at forming the simple past using, uh, well, first of all, there's three ways to form the simple past in German, depending on whether you have a weak verb, an irregular verb, or a strong verb. So like today, I'm going to be focusing primarily on the weak verbs. Uh, and the, the other lectures I'll have in the future uh, will look specifically at irregular verbs and strong verbs. I think that breaking it down this way makes it a little bit more manageable, will we'll create shorter videos, and are sort of more memorable uh, chunks for you to uh, to, to, to learn from. So how do we form a simple past? Uh, I took a, a regular sort of run of the will, a run of the mill weak verb machen uh, to make and we use our infinitive form here. This is the form that you find in the dictionary. Now what we want to do in the next step is to take machen and to remove the stem from it, the infinitive ending. Uh, or not remove the stem, we remove the infinitive ending and that brings us, it provides us with the verb stem, which is mach. Now, what we want to do after we've removed the infinitive ending is we want to go and add what I call a simple past marker. So, mach te. Now, this shows that the verb is now in the simple past tense. And once we've completed these three steps, we have mach te, what we'll do is we'll simply add an ending according to the, uh, according to the declension. Uh, so, do mach test. And uh, yeah, so that's what we have. You'll see in the upper right hand corner that uh, in the singular we only have the ending in the second person singular. And actually, let's take a closer look at that slide. So, this is what it looks like mach te, mach test, mach te, mach ten, mach tet, and mach ten. So, uh, now what's nice about machen, it's very easy to manage. It's the, we remove the uh, infinitive ending. We have a stem that ends in an H, and we simply add the simple pass marker, TE. And then, if required, we add the, uh, add the endings to that. Now, let's take it at another verb, uh, by 10 and to work. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the infinitive ending, or the infinitive, and we're going to remove the 
uh, infinitive ending. Now this sort of presents us with a problem because then we have a byte and the stem ends in a ends in a T here. So what we're going to do is if we have a verb that ends in a T or ends in a D, we're going to have to insert an E before the simple past marker. This sort of makes it, if you think about it, more pronounceable. You wouldn't say R by T. You put the E in there to make it more easy to speak. R by T. -t. So once we've done that and we've added the simple past marker with this E before it, then we just can repeat the steps that we've done before. We uh, add the ending and we get this sort of unpronounceable do a by to test, which is, I guess, sort of a good reason or a good example of why we don't really use the simple past a lot in spoken German. It just sort of is difficult to speak, even with the added E in there. Um, Germans won't say du arbeitet test. They would say du hast gearbeitet, which is uh, much more pronounceable. Uh, but then again, if you look at the upper right-hand corner, we have the same conjugation pattern. And let's take a closer look at that with this slide. So, ich arbeitete, <coughs> excuse me, ich arbeitete, du arbeitetest, er sie es arbeitete, uh, <laughs> see, that's why we don't, we don't do this, uh, er sie es arbeitete, arbeiteten, arbeitetet, and arbeiteten. Like I said, you, this is something you won't do in spoken German, but you would see uh, most likely in some type of written form or narrative. Now, finally, let's take a look at the verb haben, to have, an infinitive. Now, this is an unusual one because it's technically, I guess, it's a, it's a weak verb. Um, there's not, a, there's not a, a vowel change in the root. It's not a strong verb. Uh, it's not a regular verb, but there is a slight change in the stem. As we have the infinitive, remove the infinitive ending, and what we're going to do is we're going to change the B to a T. So note that change. B goes to a T. And then from there on out, it's going to be roughly the same, with the exception that even though the stem now ends in a T, we're not going to insert an E before the simple past marker. So it's going to be um, hatte. And on hatte, we're just going to add the, on the conjugation patterns. So um, what we'll get is something that looks like this. Ich hatte, du hattest, er hatte, wir hatten, ihr hattet, sie hatten. Now this is one of those high frequency ones that you'll hear more often in spoken German. You could also hear uh, ich habe gehabt, but ich hatte just sort of is, uh, rolls off the tongue a little bit better. So. Anyway, that's the uh, that's introduction to the simple past by means of weak verbs. Um, future ones, future video presentations will look at strong verbs and at irregular verbs as well.